television highlights of the news of yesteryear. king, for his mother is the beautiful Alexandra, beloved Queen of England. And here's the lad's father at the royal sport of grouse hunting. Son of Queen Victoria, he now rules the British Empire as Edward VII. Then in 1910, King Edward dies, and his grieving queen is here leaving Southwark Cathedral after unveiling a memorial to her devoted and illustrious husband. her son is King George V. And now, with sons of his own, he rules the far-flung British Empire through peace and in war. It's 1914, and George comes aboard vessel of the Royal Fleet to see his buddies of years ago. King George expressed more than mere sympathy for those who were wounded. Here he is shown in one of his many visits with the sick and injured aboard hospital ships bringing British casualties home from the sea or the battlefields of France. All of weary England cheers its tireless king. George Knight's Vice Admiral Fallenham in first such ceremony in over 100 years. Well aware of the home front's part in the machinery of modern war, he visits munitions plants in all parts of England. He was a king, they say, who brought himself as close to his subjects and their problems as his duties would permit. With war over, he joined his people in their enjoyment of lesser things. And with him always was his beautiful Queen Mary. The Prince of Wales is here going against his father's wishes as he rides in steeplechase. The royal parents watch anxiously as their famous son and his opponent take another jump with disaster for the prince's competitor. Young Edward seems to be having his own kind of trouble too, but with his parents watching, you can be sure the prince will not fall off his horse this trip. In fact, he wins the race. Taking part in a far less dangerous sport, head of Britain's royal family joins some of the children of his nation in ride around an amusement park. It's the spring of 1925. Happy and prosperous years the world over let even a king relax. Here with Queen Mary and high government officials, he puts his stamp of royal approval upon this flower show. Here are rare pictures indeed of one of Great Britain's most popular rulers. Always interested in anything that was dear to the hearts of his people, George V leads bright array of British officialdom to opening a famed Wembley Stadium, where important English sports events are now held. It's no historic event, but the king attends in the name of Britain and makes a speech. And for the King of England, Emperor of India, and for the people of the British Isles, British Royal Guards add pomp and color to this spectacular event. Prince of Wales in attendance, King George makes his appearance at a public function. At Hendon Air Show, he goes on the field to meet English airmen. And then his royal eye gets this look at Britain's prowess with its air wing of the armed forces. It's October 1925, and for the first time in 16 years, a King of England makes an official call in Scotland. And he's a king even in kilts. In 1935, he returns to Buckingham Palace after a long and serious illness. And the sight of him sends thrills among the cheering crowd. 
Little Princess Elizabeth gets a look at the sea of people hailing her grandfather. But there's no cheering in London or anywhere in the British Empire in January 1936. For death claims King George V at last. The king is dead. Long live the king. Gone, yes, but not forgotten. It's 29th of March, 1930, and here in Piedmont, California, a fellow who's dented just one fender too many trying to park his car isn't due for another dent. He's developed an ingenious strip wheel under a chassis of his car that will slide him sideways into any parking space. Do you have to be a mechanic to make it work? We should say not. It's so simple, even his lady friend can operate it. And does. Here is cabinet member Denby on his last day as Secretary of War. It's 1923, as Marine General Lejeune swears in Denby as reserve officer in Corps. Famed home front warrior, Denby's now a soldier in the reserves. It's August 1925, and this is Queen Marie of Romania. Queen Marie is visiting in Wales, where she is not only fated by the people, but is dressed in initiation robes as she becomes barred at ancient Welsh rites. Here's Great Britain's great Major Seagrave and Mrs. Seagrave on arrival in America. It's 1929. And these are among last films ever made of England's most gifted speed demon. For a few weeks later, on speed try at Daytona Beach, Seagrave is killed. Oneonta, Oregon, snow slide and speeding train have added up to disaster. Avalanche of heavy snow hit train from side as it sped down right of way. Crash sent engine and two passenger coaches hurtling from tracks into ditch on downhill side of mountain. It's only miracle this is not now listed as one of worst disasters in history of travel. Death almost takes a holiday, however. Several persons are injured, but only one is killed. Rescue crews and wreck train get the snowbound flyer out from under the avalanche and soon track is clear. Trains rolling. It's 7th of January, 1928, and at Postgraduate Hospital in New York City, child patients take some delightful medicine from magician Fred Keating. This is a happy way to make money disappear. You don't even have to spend it. And just look what money used to do. Yes, it made ill children laugh. Ten United States planes fly in formation to Bowling Field as President Calvin Coolidge heads welcoming committee. For it's the 2nd of May, 1927. And these 10 airships have completed 20,000 mile goodwill tour of South America. President Coolidge awards each airman the Flying Cross and commends them for their outstanding public service. The flyers pose with their commander and then Major Dog, who led the flight, leads with his chin. Crowds mill about the field to get a good look at planes that made historic flight, but better than that, made friends. And eyebrows at each other. 
This painting will sell for more than a song. The bear wears nothing but fur every season of every year. But there's plenty of evidence among these well-dressed beauties that this is 1920. It's 1922, and here in the nation's capital, 250 girls from Washington Central High School get ready to show what they've learned in class about the use of arms. Of uh, firearms, that is. Here's team that won the Astor Cup. And here are girls looking as pretty as their uniforms will allow. They aim to please, but please girls aim for the target. Good shot of two great shots, Margaret and Sally. At Belmont Park, New York, it's June 9th, 1928, and crowds await running of richest race of year. As horses go to the post, Victorian is far and away the favorite, an almost certain winner. And they're off, with Victorian leaping into the lead at the starting gun and holding on to it. The crowd is tense as Field bends into the back stretch, and Vito, number four, shortens Victorian's lead. Then, as Pack makes turn into the home stretch, Vito has wrested rail from the favorite and is galloping home on the inside, pulling away from Victorian and the others. It's a four-length victory for Vito. For when it's all over, the favorite Victorian is a sad, sad second, while Vito number four is first. <laughs> <laughs> 